Thanks so much, Julia. And it's great to be here. You know, I really like Trustville. Um, this is my third time here, and you have a great facility and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the downtown area. So this is a good place to be, and, and I, I thank you for having me again. And thanks you to, thank you to Julia, Miss Energizer Bunny. I don't think the woman ever stops. Um, uh, this is this is a burden. What's going on? What's happening to children? Um, I read this book years ago. It's called The Disappearance of Childhood, and it talks about the culture and how the culture has ruined childhood, how it's uh, taken the innocence away from children. So now, what we're dealing with is the government, and I'm talking about federal, state, and local government doing their part to rob children of their innocence. Um, I want to start by saying on behalf of myself and Eagle Forum, we believe, we believe everyone should be treated with kindness, but we also believe, regardless of their lifestyle, but we also believe that schools, state and federal government should not have a hand in promoting alternative lifestyles. And that's what's going on, and you'll learn more about that shortly. I'll let um, Sean, if you'll please start the first video. What is comprehensive sexuality education and why should you be concerned about it? Isn't education a good thing, especially about something as universal as sex? And if you're going to educate, shouldn't it be comprehensive? Well, maybe. It depends on who's doing the educating, who it's intended for, and for what purpose. Sex ed used to mean learning about human reproduction and was usually taught in high school biology. Not anymore. According to UNESCO, the United Nations Education, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, CSE is a process of teaching and learning about the cognitive, emotional, physical, and social aspects of sexuality. Sounds okay. Until that is, you pull back the curtain to understand who else is behind CSE and why? Organizations like CECUS, Planned Parenthood, Advocates for Youth, the Human Rights Campaign, and others which have motives for CSE that go well beyond what you might think. CECUS, or Sexuality Information and Education Council of the United States, which despite the name is not a government organization, has recently rebranded itself to declare what it's really about sex ed for social change, which it defines as a large scale culture shift. Not surprising since Sikas was started by this woman, Mary Calderon, who previously was the medical director of Planned Parenthood, a devotee of the eugenist and serial pedophile, Alfred Kinsey. What about Planned Parenthood? Another one of the big sponsors of CSC. This organization was started by Margaret Sanger, who believed abortion was a means to cull the racially inferior or mentally unfit from society. For Planned Parenthood, using a gender transformative approach, CSE is a means to transform gender roles and advance equitable social systems. Advocates for Youth, co-sponsor of an organization called The Future of Sex Education, CCSC is a means of advancing social, racial, and reproductive justice and equity. This thing called intersectionality, which translated means victim identity politics, and of course, language inclusivity, by which is meant people's preferred gender pronouns. These are the groups behind CSC. But who is CSC intended for? College students? who presumably are mature enough to understand and weigh the implications of such material? <laughs> Not hardly. The audience is children, grade schoolers beginning in kindergarten with sophisticated materials targeted to each successive grade. From kindergarten to second grade, teachers are advised to rely on books with titles like, Who Are You? My Princess Boy and Jacob's New Dress. From third to sixth grade, we see titles like Uncle Bobby's Wedding, King and King, and it's perfectly normal. By the time kids reach middle school, the curriculums are so sexually explicit, 
We can't even describe them here. Which brings us to the purpose of CSC. It's hardly a secret. In California, the Department of Education published a 700-page document called The Framework that outlines in great detail the requirements of CSE. From this document, it's clear what the goal of CSE is. It's to promote a worldview, a worldview with four identifiable goals. The first of which is to advance SOGI ideology in all K through 12 public education. SOGI stands for Sexual Orientation, Gender Identity, and conveys the idea that both sexual attraction and gender exist along a spectrum. One's biological sex is meaningless. CSE teaches children to embrace subjective sexual and gender identities, if need be, through the force of law. The second goal of the CSE worldview is to sexualize children. CSE encourages children to become sexually active beginning in grade school. The evidence for this is amply provided in the various approved curriculums. The third goal is to destroy the nuclear family as the indispensable support of a healthy society, or at least the idea of it. CSE teaches that all arrangements and groupings of consenting adults are equally valid. Fourth and finally, CSE seeks to undermine parental authority. A parent's conventional understanding of sex and gender are taught as negative stereotypes and may even be signs of spiritual abuse. Parents are discouraged from viewing CSE teaching materials by a mass of bureaucratic red tape. Children are coached on how to get contraceptives, treatment for STDs, and even abortions, all without a parent's consent or even knowledge. Taken together, as Sikas' motto declares, the purpose of CSE is to bring about social change. But is this kind of social change a goal shared by taxpaying parents of children in the public school system? Should it be? Forewarned is forearmed. I'm Mark Schneider with Protect Our Kids. Hi there. Ready for today's topic? So what is sexuality and who is sexual? It covers a lot of topics, like how our bodies look, how our body works, our romantic feelings, our friendships, and family relationships. It's something that impacts everyone for their whole lives. Sexuality starts before a baby is born, since people are constantly asking about the gender, making assumptions about its behavior, picking colors for the baby's room, and even what toys they play with. As we grow up, we get a lot of messages from the media, our religions, our cultures, and families about what is okay and not okay. A lot of these messages are so subtle and happen over such a long amount of time that we don't even realize where some of our ideas about sexuality even came from. The movies might make you feel like you need to be thin to be attractive, but you realize later that you were attractive just the way you were all along. All of these messages often influence how we think about ourselves. Our sexuality includes the messages we get about gender roles or when a person is expected to act a certain way based on how society views their gender. Maybe you don't want to be a girly girl or you feel like you want to be but society doesn't make it feel okay to be that way. Or you really don't care for either and are more than happy to be just who you are. Who you are attracted to often called sexual orientation, is also part of a person's sexuality. Remember, it isn't just what you do with someone, it's also how that someone makes you feel. For example, you could feel attracted to people of your same gender or another gender without ever having touched someone. That doesn't make those feelings any less valid. You don't have to have romantic or sexual feelings for anyone at all, either. It doesn't matter if you're young, old. It doesn't matter what your body can physically do or can't do. 
If you're religious or not, if you've survived trauma, the shape and size of your body, the color of your skin, your gender identity, don't matter. Everyone is sexual, and it is all amazing. Thank you so much for watching this video. To see more videos from this series, please follow the link to amaze.org. Now I apologize for that. That is uh, made for children. And it's disgusting. But unfortunately, uh, there are more of those, and I'll, I'll talk more about that later. But that video is a resource that you can find on the Alabama Campaign for Adolescent Sexual Health, also known as ACASH. They are based in Montgomery. Uh, their advocacy tools provide a link to CECAS, which was talked about in the video. CECAS is Sexual Information Education Council of the United States. Now, I don't know where this video was used. Um, it does illustrate the assault on children and how widespread sexualizing children have be has become. And I'll talk more about ACASH shortly. Um, I wanted to just start with telling you what really uh, began my journey on researching comprehensive sex education and some of the other things in our schools like social emotional learning and um, critical race theory. Um, I just happened to be reading an article in the Epic Times. The title of the article is, or was, Texas Group Successfully Blocks Harmful School Sex Ed Program Used in 35 States. Well, I read further and found out that Alabama is one of the 35 states. Now, I'm going to read a portion of the article. It's graphic. When it gets too graphic, I'll say blank. Um, but I'm going to read some of it that you know might be offensive uh, to some of you. But if this is being presented to our children, I think we really need to have a clear view of what's going on. Uh, the, two, the program that specifically was spoken about in the article was Making Proud Choices. That's in Alabama. There's another one called Making a Difference. Uh, and there are a couple of others that I'll also mention later. This is from the, the, the news article. Making Proud Choices Sexualizes Children. It teaches children how to negotiate for sexual encounters. They have a yellow light, red light, green light um, plan the way they do it. It promotes homosexual and, believe it or not, bisexual behavior. Bisexual behavior. It encourages children to seek out sexual pleasure. It promotes blank and blank promotes condom use in inappropriate ways. And one way is they teach children how to take a condom and cut it in a manner that they can make a dental dam out of it. It teaches children how to have sex when they are ready, fails to establish abstinence as the standard. It promotes transgender ideology, which we're seeing that across the country. It promotes abortion, encourages children to teach others about sex, undermines traditional values and beliefs, undermines parents and parental rights, and refer, few, excuse me, refers children to harmful resources like Planned Parenthood. The curriculum also provides animated videos of different sex acts and I'm not just talking about heterosexual. So the newspaper, the, col uh, the uh, journalist, reached out to the departments of education in all 35 states. Some of them responded, some of them didn't. Uh, the Alabama State Department Ed of Education response was, quote, some Alabama schools use the curriculum, but it isn't clear where it's used. And the reason being is the uh, it's a local control issue. The Alabama State Department of Education 
doesn't have any um, programs that they support or recommend. Now, Family Watch International is a nonprofit organization, and they analyze all of these um, comprehensive sex ed programs. They analyze the ones that are being used in Alabama. Two of them have what are two of them have fifteen out of fifteen harmful elements as deemed by Family Watch International, and it covers all the stuff I just read to you. Um, one of them has nine out of fifteen. Another has seven out of 15. And just having one harmful element makes these programs inappropriate for children. Now, Eagle Forum has been trying to find out through the Alabama Department of Public Health where these programs are taught because the Health and Human Services in Washington, D.C., and this was uh, began in 2015, um, these particular programs were funded in 2015. HHS sent the money to the Alabama Department of Public Health. Alabama Department of Health, Public Health, sent the money or gave the grants to schools that requested it. Now, I'm going to send Julia a link that gives you the counties where this, this is being taught in schools and youth organizations. So she'll send that out to everybody. Now, we don't have the school names. Uh, Representative Mike Holmes tried to find out, and all they sent to him was graphs with demographics. Greg Munger, who has done a, a story on this, and I really uh, recommend that you start checking out 1819 News because they're doing a lot of uh, stories on education, this type of thing, um, comprehensive sex education, social emotional learning, and those uh, other programs in the schools. So anyway, thus far, we haven't been able to get the list of schools. I'm hoping that Danny Garrett will be able to get that information for us. Um, now, I, I do want to be clear. These particular programs may not be in your child's school, but that doesn't mean the one that's in your child's school is any better. So you really must go to the school and ask to see the curriculum. Don't just let them say, well, we think it's fine, and it's, this is the name. Ask to see it. Okay, now back to the Alabama Campaign for Adolescent Secu Sexual Health, or ACASH. Their resources include the videos that you just saw. Other titles are Condom Negotiation, Having Sex, Intimacy, and Emotions, does size really matter? How to be an LGBTQIA plus ally? How the blank grows? Being female, male, transgender, and fluid? Abortion with pills, what is it? And like I mentioned before, they promote abortion. They're um, in league with Planned Parenthood. Uh, the last one, what are pronouns? And I think you all know, or you may know, that that's a big issue in schools right now. A lot of the teachers are asking kids uh, to tell them what pro pronouns pre what they prefer. In fact, the Mountain Brook schools, um, a mother sent me a screenshot of a picture that their child took asking for the pronouns. And I've heard from other mothers that the teacher either says, this is my, these are my pronouns, I want you to respect them, and also ask the children what their pronouns are. And a good friend of mine, I told her about it, and she said, nah, that's not happening in my granddaughter's school. Well, she asked her, and it was. But the thing is, children are used to it. And whatever the school, you know, instructs them in, they think, well, that's part of the school day. And I learned that 20 years ago with the Channel One issue, that... Kids weren't telling their parents, you know, what was going on. It was a teacher, actually, that brought it to my attention, and then my youngest son, you know, elaborated. Um, now, the 1819 News reported that ACASH boasts that they have trained 440 individuals to instruct with this program. The website also highlights the CSC programs that I mentioned to you earlier, so they are also promoting those programs. Um, now, Craig Munger, who is the journalist for 1819 News, 
he tried to find out who these individuals that were being taught, that were being instructed, and where did they, uh, after they were instructed, where did they go to teach the material? And he did not get an answer. Um, a part of his article was about uh, the board of directors. Eric Mackey, is, who was our state superintendent, was on the board of directors as an ex officio member. Well, um, after this journalist, Craig Monger, contacted him, he didn't know he was on there. He was put on there just because he was a state superintendent and that's what they've been doing. So it's really, um, it's really underhanded for them to try and tie themselves to the Alabama Department of Education by putting you know, Eric Mackey's picture on their website and calling him a board member. Uh, but he made sure that that was removed. Now, Scott Harris, who is our uh, Alabama public health officer, he was also called, his picture's on there. He's a, on the board of directors ex officio. He has not asked for it to be removed. The same with Nancy Buckner, who is the commissioner of DHR. She has not asked for it to be removed, which leads me to believe that they are supportive of this type of um, indoctrination to children. Now, partners listed, one of them was Blue Cross Blue Shield. In September, I took a screenshot, their name was on there. When I went back yesterday, their name was gone. So I'm thinking that perhaps some of the, um, the fact that it was highlighted through Craig's article that may have uh, had a bearing on that. Um, so, okay, what about the federal government? The federal government is doing lots. They are doing lots and they have a lot of money to promote this type of agenda. And they are really promoting, in a huge way, transgenderism. Um, I'm get, just going to read a portion of a proclamation uh, by President Joe Biden from the White House. It's called a proclamation on Transgender Day of Visibility, March 2020. I'll just read a few portions. On this day and every day, we recognize the resilience, strength, and joy of transgender, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people. We celebrate the activism and determination that have fueled the fight for transgender equality. We oppose efforts to criminalize supportive medical care for transgender kids, to ban transgenders from playing sports, and to outlaw discussing LGBTQI plus people in schools. We believe it undermines their humanity, humanity and corrodes our nation's values. Uh, Julia mentioned the Vulnerable Child Compassion and Protection Act and that's exactly what they're talking about. And that's exactly why the DOJ has subpoenaed information about VCAP from Eagle Forum of Alabama. Now here's something I agree with from this proclamation and from our president. My entire administration is committed to ensuring that transgender people enjoy the freedom and equality that are promised to everyone in America. And they should be but their agenda should not be promoted in our public schools. Another um, federal government agency that is promoting um, comprehensive sex education. This is from the CDC. The CDC points people to transgender, transgenderism and teen sex websites. The taxpayer-funded agency offers online advice on sexuality with content that promotes transgenderism, sex acts, and occult beliefs. This is our government. Let me just uh, tell you a little bit about their website. One of the links listed by the C CDC is Q Chat Space. And at the bottom of the uh, website, it has a green banner. 
and it says for quick release, click here. So if a parent is coming in the room and about to look over your shoulder, you can qu uh, quickly hit that link and it'll take you back to the Google search engine. So what do they have on QChat space? Subjects include sex change surgeries, transgender and non-binary sex at night, an introduction to drag culture, a chat on having multiple genders, as well as blank and blank sex advice. They also have chats that discuss, discuss binge drinking and how teens can drink safely. Underage drinking is against the law. How underage kids can drink safely. Oh, and before I forget, on the website, uh, they also have uh, CDC on their website has healthychildren.org, and they recommend that parents affirm children who are nonconforming or want to uh, change their gender. That's the only advice they give parents to confirm what's going on, not to get any kind of counseling. Uh, recently, this year, the CDC allocated $85 million on a grant program requiring schools that took the dollars to start grace, gay straight alliance clubs. Now this is for middle and high school. These schools will be awarded anywhere between $12,000 to $350,000 for the program. Well, how about giving grants to lower student pupil ratio? Or how about giving grants that will give us some academic benefit. Um, talking about the transgender issue, and you may have seen this in the news, it was recently on, I think it was Laura Ingram's show on Fox. A uh, county in Maryland saw a 582% increase in non-conforming genders among their student population. Well, do you think any of this indoctrination from our schools has anything to do with that? Where else would children get that? Um, there's a lady in Mountain Brook, uh, Dr. Holly Gann, and she has a 12, uh, excuse me, a 20 minute video. She's a dermatologist talking about a group of girls in her area that decided they were lesbians. This was in uh, elementary school. Well, when they moved up to middle school, one of the girls decided she wasn't a lesbian after all. Well, she was ostracized from the group. So this is going on already, and we're just finding out about it. Um, in Huntsville, Alabama, they have a, a drag queen middle school teacher at Mountain Gap Middle School. His name is Miss Majesty Divine. On his Facebook page, he has pictures of a man kissing his fake breasts, and I won't mention the other lewd acts, but do you think some of those children know about that Facebook page? The principal, I don't know if he can't do anything about it, but he's not doing anything about it. But that's quite an example for our school children. Um, Eagle Forum is also investigating another problem with the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, they have a state and local youth risk behavior survey. Alabama is one of the 40 participating states. I contacted Gary Palmer's office, uh, since it's a federal government agency and not state. His chief of staff, William Smith, is looking uh, into the, this survey. He's working to get a list of the schools that participate so that we can let parents know. Because otherwise, they won't know. The school will give the survey without parental uh, permission. Because of the HB 123, the mental health bill that was passed, if you're 14 and over, parent does not have to give permission for any surveys in the schools. Let me just read a couple of the questions. There are, um, I think it's, 
I think it's 21 page survey and about 82 questions. Question number 62. Now this is assuming, of course, that all children in high school have sexual intercourse. The last time you had sexual intercourse with an opposite sex partner, what one method do you or your partner use to prevent pregnancy? Number 65, some people describe themselves as transgender when their sex at birth does not match the way they think or feel about their gender. Are you transgender? A teacher in South Alabama recently informed our Teen Eagle leader that her school system gives students a survey via tablet that only the students can see, not parents. The teacher was not even allowed to see the questions. Now that's pretty disturbing. Uh, let me just read a very well worded letter from a mom about her daughter, and this was in a Birmingham area school. She wrote the following to her school. I quote, I want to know what I need to do to make certain my daughter, ninth grader, is opted out of the expanded mental health services. She is over 14, so was therefore automatically opted in without our consent. I hope you know the decision to opt out is not a condemnation of your services or your heart, but a, ref a reflection of our family values. God put us in authority over our children not the education system. We firmly disagree with much of the language in this expansion of services. For instance, no required parental notification. And therefore, we no longer believe it's the intent, its intent is to partner with parents, but to exclude them and create a relationship of distrust. And sad to say, a lot of that, that's what's happening. Parents don't trust their schools anymore. And it's very, it's so sad because we have some wonderful teachers. We have some wonderful educators and you probably know them. They'll probably go to church with you or maybe close friends. Um, but the bottom line, schools are normalizing behavior that parents don't want normalized. And I say, God bless the parents and groups of parents that organized, like the parents in Texas that got making proud choices out of their school system. Local Alabama, I don't know if you've heard of that group. Uh, I think they started in Birmingham. Mountain Brook families, they're fighting this. Truth in Education, and of course, our 20 Eagle Forum groups that are throughout the state. Now, um, this is a report from the Institute for Research and Evaluation. And I'm gonna read a portion of it to you. They also did a report in 2017 that was called a landmark study. And in it, they found that these comprehensive sex education programs were not effective. In fact, several of them, I think maybe four, actually increased pregnancy and sexual activity. So in 2018, uh, President Trump tried to defund these programs. The House agreed, the Senate didn't, so the, the funding remained. Uh, now this is the 2020 um, report, and let me just read a portion of that. A considerable amount of evidence shows that sexual activity for adolescents, especially females, is psychologically detrimental. IRE, that's this um, Institute for Research and Evaluation, found sexually active teens were at a higher risk for depression and suicide, although sexual initiation was more detrimental to girls than boys. Now you hear over and over again that the reason children are committing suicide is because we're not honoring their gender um, identity. Well, it's because we're pushing uh, early sexual activity on them and really um, educating them in the different types of sexual activity and the different genders. Uh, another study found adolescent sexual debut 
was associated with lower life satisfaction afterward for both males and females, regardless of age, of, of age at first sex, which no surprise there. I think common sense tells us that. In a nationwide survey of young, survey of young adult women, the large majority expressed re regret about initiating sexual activity. Two thirds of those who are sexually experienced said they wish they had waited longer to have sex. Only 24% they felt, said they felt happy about losing their virginity. The, the physical harms of sexual activity for adolescents are well documented. Teen sexual activity is associated with a higher rate of dating violence. Sexually active high school girls are almost five times more likely to be victimized by data, dating violence than girls who are abstinent. And I think that makes perfect sense too. Approximately 50% that were sexually active experienced stat statutory rape. Many, if not most, US adolescents, excuse me, US adolescents who receive sex, sex education receive it in a school setting. And the research evidence does not show that school-based comprehensive sex education programs have been effective. Now, I'm going to send a link to this report to Julia so all of you can read it. I think you'll, um, you'll find it eye-opening. It's, it's pretty thorough. Um, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I met uh, for three hours today with a lady named Joy Wassell, and she started a program in Tennessee called Decisions, Choices, and Options. In fact, she was on the Greg Davis show tonight at six o'clock, so I got to hear a little bit of what she had to say. Um, she has given me their curriculum, and from what I've seen, I think any parent would be happy to have this in schools. It does cover HIV and STDs in the higher grades. I mean, children need to know, you know, what they can expect if they're sexually active. But it also um, gives them a sense of responsibility. You know, they make their own choices. I was really impressed with it, and I would love to meet with our new legislator to discuss it with him. Um, I would love for Joy to be able to go to Montgomery and give her program to the legislators so they know that we do have a really evidence-based um, program that I don't think any parent would be uh, unhappy with. You know, they don't, they don't go into the transgender, they don't go into gender fluidity like the comprehensive sex education programs do. You know, I, this is hard because um, we want to be allies with our schools. There's some good people in our schools, and it's difficult for them. Um, there's one teacher that told me that he is really um, having to be unprincipled in his mind because some of these things he's required by the school system to do, and uh, he knows that the parents would not approve of was being taught. And I'm not just, just talking about comprehensive sex education, I'm talking about the social emotional learning too, which brings in a lot of this gender ideology. So we expect there will be bills and we hope there will be bills in the next legislative session. I'm hoping that when we meet with our legislators and I'm happy to say that Senator Greg Reed, who is our Senate pro tem, uh, is going to meet with me next Tuesday. I'm going to make a presentation and hoping that we can get him on board and um, perhaps have an opportunity to speak to other legislators so that know exactly what's going on. My hope is that they will take action before we have to, you know, get uh, other conservative organizations, our Eagle Forum, the parents groups that I mentioned to have to, you know, raise heck. I'm hoping they'll do it without that happening. I'm hoping that the information we have is convincing enough 
that they will take action. Um, but I just want to, you know, make it clear that we we do respect our teachers and our schools, but this has got to stop. It is a war on children, and parents don't know about it. Um, so I invite you to work with us, work with Eagle Forum. On our website, we have a lot of information on what's going on in schools. And like I said before, 1819 News, they're keeping up with things uh, in real time. Uh, Greg Davis Show, he's been having a lot of education, um, you know, folks on that know what's going on in education. So I'd recommend that to you too. Um, I hope you agree it's time for not only parents, but taxpaying citizens to get in the game because this is wasting taxpayer dollars. I mean, we're academics, you know, how much time is wasted on this? where uh, children are not getting, you know, math, science, history. Uh, this takes an awful lot of time. I'd like to leave you with two thoughts, and I know you know both of them. The first one is Edmund Burke. Evil prevails when good, good men do nothing. And that saying evil may sound harsh, but adults promoting gender fluidity and promiscuity to minors, that's evil. And you think about what these children are learning, it will lead them to a life of promiscuity. And pornography is out there so easily to, to see, uh, so available. And then the uh, last thing I'd like to leave you with, and I know you know this, the verse from Mark 9.42, Whoever causes one of these little ones to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he was thrown into the sea to drown. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um,